It's finally happening. Come take a look at the second Gathering Storm book, The Fracture of Beel Tan. Spiky bits. All right, welcome back, hobby maniacs and Eldar aficionados alike. This is I don't know I don't know the time of ending. I guess this is what Games Workshop's calling it. The brand new book is here. We know there's going to be a third book. It's going to have the Primarch in it for the Ultramarines. It's going to be crazy. But until then, when will then be now? We have the Eldar drama, the Eldar saga getting played out. You know, Slanesh versus Eldar. It's been a whole thing for all these years. And it's, um, well, it still is kind of a thing. We, we didn't see too much stuff super decided in the storyline. Just a lot of, a lot of politicking and a lot of drama. But there is some stuff we need to talk about in here. Overall, it looks like a great book. Uh, 136 pages, $50 hardback. Here you can see some of what is contained inside. Of course, here are the main players in the storyline, the fluff side of it, which is about 120, I want to say it was 120, it was about 120, 115 pages of kind of fluff, missions, all sorts of different things. And then it gets into a rule section where they, they have the Echoes of War, which follow along with the, the battles that happen in the whole fluff section here. And then we've got all of the data scrolls. We've got uh, three new data scrolls. I think it's six formation, a detachment for the whole Yanari kind of war host type thing. And then Altway kind of snuck in with some special rules, a strike force of their own, um, new units, and then of course the armory for all of that as well. So a lot of stuff is actually jam packed into this book. Now granted, uh, if you're an Imperial player, you're probably just like, meh, which is reasonable. I mean, I, I can definitely see that, but this, as I talked about in the Long War uh, podcast webcast uh, a few days ago, like this is, basically the duplication of the end times for Warhammer Fantasy. Like, and I'm not saying it's gonna end the same way and they're gonna roll things over the same way. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying they're, they're, they're following a proven, tr tried and true kind of method with their end times books for fantasy over to these books here. Now, these aren't the two, the two uh, volume books two, uh, I guess, two volume sets of, of two books that came out for the end times, but it's following literally the same crazy, like, storyline. Like, you go here, you do this thing, then you go over here, you do this thing, and these people die, and this happens, and these grand alliances are formed along the way, and, and you get, like, these super armies, which we're starting, which we saw in the last book, and we're seeing, like, a ginormous detachment in this book, where all the Eldar are, like, fist bumping, like, yo, Harlequins, with the Dark Eldar, with the, you know, the Eldar, yo, we're all good, we're all fighting on the same team, same teams, he's, yo, alright, let's beat Slanesh, and there's that sort of thing happening right now, and it's crazy, and, I, and after I read, and I looked over all this stuff, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is end times all over again for 40k, like, they're following the same method, which I, I can't, I can't fault them. It was incredibly successful in it, but extremely huge letdown at the end when they rolled out Age of Sigmar so poorly in, in uh, 2000, what, what was it, 14, right? Like the summer of 2014 was, was a very bad time from, from that month to roughly, I want to say October of that year, like things were really in the gutter for the hobby. A lot of people were angry. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people were angry. And it was a very bad time for the hobby, but then Roundtree came on board, things started to turn around, and we're in a better place now. We're in a better place. And I do not think something like that will happen again, but they are literally following the same path. So think about it for a minute, comment below, because I wanna hear what you think about that as well. That's what, kind of where I'm going with. Now, as far as the, the way the book's laid out, of course, you've got, hey, what's going on with the Eldar? Okay, let's look back to the past. And then the last hope, obviously, you need. And then it gets into the Echoes of War with the battles that were fought there are being, are, uh, you can reenact them on the tabletop. That's your casual thing, kind of, kind of type deal. And then you got Forces of the Eldari, which is your, you know, your overall kind of really nice painted miniatures gallery of all that stuff. And then it gets into the data sheets and all the special rules that we just kind of already overviewed about. Now remember, this is the first look. I'm not going to show you everything. You need to go buy the book. This is for you to decide if you want to buy the book and make some points about what you think about the book, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to show you everything. We're not going to talk about all the new rules. That's our tips and tactics where we go through and we're like, hey, don't forget about this. Hey, use this. And those usually come out a week later. This is not a replacement for you buying the book. I get a lot of flack about that. Like, why didn't you show all the pages? Well, that's literally illegal, <laughs> step one. And two, 
uh, that's just not what this is for. This is a this is a review, not a uh, substitute to you buying the book kind of type deal. For all you other people that that always uh, love re watching our stuff, uh, thank you for not being obnoxious about it. But it's something about these books is they're really bringing out the uh, the bad commenters. I feel like so. Like I said, it gets into the story which has been alluded to on Twitch by Warhammer Community and Warhammer TV. Uh, it's always, always uh, interesting listening to the witty banter of Eddie and Rob, with Eddie knowing far more than Rob, than the, the Warhammer TV Rob. Uh, sure, surely not this Rob. And I have socks that are older than some people's hobby, I feel like. And then you get into a lot of this section here. And that's why we do this. And the Demon Storm, basically what's going on with Scarbrand in the mask, teaming up to go after some Nom Nom Eldar. And gets into all sorts of sections there. And then we get into the big section of, oh, what's going on? Oh, poof, an Avatar. What just happened? Things are breaking everywhere. There's supposed to be an Avatar in there, not the crazy Yincarnate. And then it gets into more of that. Lots more of that, actually. Lots more fluff, total sections of fluff, and then we got the painted figures galleries, which are read by Hyang. Oh, there's actually a really good story in here with Aramon as well. Clash on the Ice Moon. Here's the heavy metal, heavy metal sections. Oh, that's the very last page. You're not supposed to see that. Spoiler alert, they're going to Ultramar. Which we kind of already assumed that, I suppose. And there's all of your fantastic painted miniatures, and then the profiles to get you, to get you all those dope paint jobs. Now it gets into the rules section where they go over a whole lot of stuff, whole lot of mess. There's your Echoes of War missions, and then here are the rules for uh, the new models themselves, which also come in the Triumvirate, which we already reviewed. That's another. Uh, review up here, another first look up here on the channel. So you can see the rules for your brain, the Visark, really interesting points and in what they do. Uh, a lot of their weapons, I would uh, actually prefer they worked a little differently. But there's some mechanics in play here that we're not going to really get into where there's a lot of synergistic elements. It's almost like the Gene Stealer cult in, in a way of all these things, these layers within layers and these things that do other things. And it's just very, um, very synergetic on how it all works. So when you look at a war scroll, you're not really seeing the big picture unless you look at a lot of the, the rules for the overall Yanari kind of war host attachment type thing. But needless to say, the Triumvirate, if you do take all three, uh, gets even better than the individual kind of layers of, of special rules here as well. Um, Always Having Fearless is pretty good. And what was the other one? Oh, plus one rolls. Uh, for their special rules as well for the triumvirate so that's that's kind of cool then you've got kind of a um bigger force i guess more like a uh remember each one of these is technically a detachment everything is a detachment whether it's a detachment like a formation or a detachment like a data sheet everything is a detachment and that's a, something to keep in mind when you say detachment a lot of people think oh well this detachment is the way you take take this this and this well Technically, a formation is a detachment too. And then here we have some mini formations that kind of feed, they give you that feel of Eldar and Dark Eldar, or Eldar, Dark Eldar, and Harlequins. And then it goes into um, some even bigger stuff where the Harlequins are exclusively working with the Dark Eldar. Um, you can put in some of the Wind Riders, of course. And then you've got here, which looks to be a new model of uh, the. Uh, what is that, Uriel, the Angel of Iandin? I haven't seen that model before. Have you seen that model before? Could be, an, it could be, I suppose, a conversion. Could be, but I don't think it is because that's her staff. But it could be. That being said, it could be a new model too. You heard it your first. Probably not, because you're probably gonna see it on the internet before this video even comes out. Once somebody realizes that might be a new model. And then there's the forces and the artifacts. There, of course, is a new psychic chart as well. So if you're an Eldar player, you're looking to vote with your hobby dollars. This may not be a bad way to go, to be quite honest. Forces of Ulthway, something that a lot of people weren't even talking about until the very end of the week this week. Yes, there's Ulthway in here. Now, this is kind of how they did the Imperial Agents, where they had these mini little formation detachments inside of a book that has other stuff in it. So it's like a mini detachment with very specific compulsory and optional restrictions here on how to field it. But when you do, you get access to these bad boys right here. Now there's also a chart in the front with uh, allies and things for the Yanari. This is a separate complete force 
kind of mini faction from the Unari in themselves, so that stuff would not apply to here, and then here's how to take them, and all that stuff. So you technically get two new Eldar army lists inside this book, so if you're a fan of the Eldar, I don't think this is a bad pickup at all, plus you get all of this new fluff, blah, 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 blah all day, every day. So, conclusions. Well, I think moving forward, if you're trying to collect a set of Gathering Storm, you're obviously gonna need this, but remember, this is mostly a fluff book with some rules for some new models so you know if you're just like hey i play eldar chances are you're going to need these models it's not like the the imperial one where you can kind of pick and choose between baller serious or you know uh shadow facts gray facts whatever you want to call her whatever her actual real name is who knows and celestine herself you know like well i only play sisters i only want celestine so you kind of need all these folks in this one so they kind of got you over the barrel as far as uh your faction al allegiance or alliance i guess so to speak there so it's really interesting how they're doing this and all the marketing and just all these bells are going off in my head as i'm looking through all this stuff i was like Man, it really is. The, it feels like the end times fantasy to me again without the the true amount of angst that I think might set in with this particular rule set here. But we'll see. I mean, obviously, I'm not sound, sounding alarm bells. I'm sounding familiarity bells. I don't think GW is stupid enough to shoot themselves in the foot by doing what they did with uh, Warhammer Fantasy. So I just want to make sure you understand the point I'm trying to make here. I'm not trying to worry you. I'm trying to say this is a proven method that will see Games Workshop uh, probably reap incredible rewards in both the hearts and minds of players and also financially, you know, in those returns as well in uh, both the game stores and in the, the boardroom, I suppose. So there is that. I think it's a good thing. I think moving forward, I can't wait to see Gathering Storm Part 3 because we know there's going to be a Primark in there. And that is looking so fresh. I actually want to know more about Cypher than I do Gilliman. So maybe I'm, maybe I'm a heretic. Probably a heretic. Don't judge me much. <laughs> questions, comments, errors, omissions. Please leave them in the questions field below and we will try to get to them all. Deleted scenes, bonus content, all the interviews and post-game wrap-up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. Thelongward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.